Hi guys and welcome. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Neo Furiwata and I'll be doing a complete uh, strip down and I'll be cleaning this brush and reassembling it. So anybody that's wanting to know a bit more about their Neo and a bit more about uh, airbrushes, especially starting airbrushing in general, uh, this will be the video for you. So um, first of all a quick look at the box. It's a plain Unexciting cardboard box, but quite nicely packaged, very sturdy, and a little bit of information on the back that tells you what you can use it for and what it is. The lid simply lifts off, and inside you've got a dense foam pre cut um, case with your bits and pieces in. That is a spare needle which doesn't come as standard. This um, this was bought second hand, but cleaned and used and cleaned. So um, I'll show you more on that in a moment. But uh, this is what you will get ordinarily when you buy one new. Lift out the foam and underneath you've got a set of instructions which are very, very basic indeed, as you can see there. And other than giving you a general idea, not much use. So inside here you've got a large paint cup, a small paint cup, a cap for the large paint cup, all very nice chrome, a spanner or wrench to undo the paint nozzle, and the airbrush itself with the large paint cup attached. And these just unscrew and use a, a rubber or Viton, I believe, O-ring. I know the early versions of the Iwata Neo, or Neo for Iwata rather, because it's not made by Iwata, but we'll get onto that in a moment. The early versions were sold as not solvent safe, uh, meaning that it would have used standard O-rings, not, not something like Viton, which is solvent resistant, and the later ones are sold as solvent safe. A lot of people say that the Neo is a cheap Chinese airbrush, and the only difference is that it's made with better quality control, or it actually has quality control over your cheap Chinese airbrushes. And I can tell you, having, um, having a cheap Chinese airbrush, uh, having had a couple, and I still have one that I do still use, the one that I originally got with my very first compressor, and um, I will be doing a video very shortly on starting airbrushing and, and initial setups and such. But that's by the by. I still have one of those and I can tell you comparing that to this is is comparing, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole different world. Now this isn't high quality Iwata standard, but it's far, far better than cheap Chinese build as well. The, the plating, the quality, the build, it's, it's just much better overall. And you can see, you can see it is, you can feel it is. It's a good solid, nicely machined airbrush. And I believe that these are actually manufactured by the company that make Grex airbrushes, which are very, very good. So what we're going to do is take out the wrench or spanner because we will need that. And then I'm going to go ahead and start stripping the airbrush. So I'm going to unscrew the colour cup first of all. Put that to one side. And then we'll unscrew the rear. Drawing back the trigger so that you don't damage the needle tip. Unscrew the fan cap and then the nozzle cap. Then taking the wrench, unscrew the nozzle itself and carefully unscrew that and draw it off. At which point you can release the trigger, unscrew the chucking nut on the needle and push the needle out through the front of the brush. This is as far as you would typically strip a brush for cleaning, as you will see if you refer to my how to thoroughly clean an airbrush video, which hopefully if 
if I can figure out the linking and everything will appear up here. If not, it will appear in the description below. And this, uh, this method works for any airbrush and will give you a spotless airbrush in 10 minutes or less. And so this is typically as, as far as you would need to strip this brush for the purposes of uh, cleaning after a spraying session. However, I'm going to go ahead and strip this completely. So the next step is to pull out the trigger and then unscrew the needle assembly and draw that back out of the airbrush body along with this attached S piece. And I'm going to unscrew the chucking nut, slide this back and this will reveal the spring. And then on the body itself, let's just move this up here so we can see what we're doing. On the body itself, the only bit left to remove is the air valve assembly, which unscrews, inside of which you'll have a seal at the base and a seal up near the plunger, which you can see lift up slightly there. That's the airbrush body completely disassembled. You can now, if required, uh, immerse the entire body in something like cellulose or lacquer thinner if it's clogged up and needs a good thorough clean. Now this airbrush was sold as used and cleaned and it is typically, and this is usually the case, filthy. So, and you can see this from the inside of the paint cup there, it's really not been cleaned well at all. And although it doesn't look bad externally, it's really quite grubby inside the paint cup there on the needle and just generally round about the nozzle area. It's, it's quite, quite grubby, it's got bits of dried paint and it's gonna need a very, very thorough clean for the first time around. What I'm going to do now is disassemble the air valve for completeness. Uh, this is typically only required if you need to immerse this to clean it if it's for some reason it's got paint all over it, which is very rare because that means an internal seal has failed back here. For this you'll need a small Allen wrench and sometimes it can be done with a pair of tweezers because it will have a slot either side or a slot like a, a carburetor jet so you can use a screwdriver and then the brass assembly will fall out and this includes a spring which actually opens, allows or rather seals the air valve after you release the plunger trigger and the one part left after that is the needle packing screw and valve which is deep down in the body there. So here we've got a two millimeter allen wrench Make sure you've got a good fitting one because these air valves are only made of brass and they can be easily damaged and the same applies to the uh, needle packing assembly and the bottom of that as you see drops out and then if you push on this valve here and just push that back up to uh, free off the o-ring seal at the top be very careful that you don't lose these rubber seals because they're incredibly tiny as you can see give that a bit of a push and you'll see that that drops out of the bottom and on this is also another incredibly tiny o-ring seal let's just try and focus on that for you Just on this raised bump at the bottom there is another very tiny rubber seal or Viton, I believe it is. All these seals are replaceable and all these can be gotten from uh, airbrush supply places and spares places and also is a tiny, tiny spring. Make sure that you don't lose that. This actually fits on this side like so. And that allows the valve to spring back up and seal, stopping air leaking through. So that's the air valve assembly. If you need to immerse any of this 
in thinners to let it soak and clean and you can clean internally with things like cotton buds and what have you. If you need to immerse any of this make sure that you remove taking care not to damage any of the rubber seals because although these are solvent resistant if they are Viton which I suspect they are it doesn't mean that they are completely solvent proof and you don't really want them sitting in the thinners unnecessarily. It's highly highly unlikely that you will need to because if you have got paint all over the insides of this bit it generally means that the seal down here has failed spectacularly and paint has poured down inside down through here and gunked everything up and hasn't been cleaned out properly. So it is, it is quite rare that you see that. But it can happen. So the next thing I need is a screwdriver. And then guiding that down inside the body and making sure it locates in the slot. I unscrew that. And out drops this little whoops, brass nut here, which looks much like a jet from a carburetor with a slot in the back and some gunked up paint on it, which is from dragging the needle backwards out of the airbrush, which is why you always pull the needle out of the front of the brush because dried paint gets dragged through the seal wearing the seal and it gets gunked up everywhere. This is why it's highly recommended that you draw the needle from the front of the brush. The Teflon seal is stuck inside so I'm going to try and dislodge that with the back of the airbrush needle. We've now got the uh, Teflon seal out of the um, inside of the airbrush body and that took some shifting because there was actually quite a bit of dried paint caked around it. In order to get this out I had to insert the needle to seal this off and drip some thinners, some cellulose thinners in there, like a thinners to you guys in the US, leave that there to soak and then I had to use an Iwata needle which are actually very very slightly thicker than any other brand of needles uh, for those that don't know and I had to use one of those to push through and tap this out using it kind of like a slide hammer and it did distort it a little bit on exiting but hopefully it will still be okay when reinserted if not I may need to put a new uh, uh, well if not I will need to put a new Teflon seal in but what I'm going to do now is, is zoom in close I'm going to have a close-up look of some of the components before I go ahead and clean them these flakes of paint all came out from around the Teflon seal in the body as you can see dried crusty bits of paint this is why it's important to thoroughly clean your airbrush now exterior of the airbrush body is actually quite good there are caked on dribbles down here which is common run down the outside of the cup tend to get ignored on cleanup there are dribbles around the rear end of the seals here again very common and inside the threaded area difficult to see but there's little bits in there where the nozzle goes in inside where the paint cup screws on the threaded parts again it's caked around there this is common on ones with separate cups that screw on because people tend not to unscrew the cups to clean them and also inside the paint bowl uh, quite dirty lots of caked on paint there and difficult to see but down inside there there's still a bit of uh, paint in there so that's going to need a good scrub with cellulose or lacquer thinners to give it a clean and the needle itself and this is going to be quite difficult to see again I appreciate but hopefully you can see there's some bits of dried paint on here just in spots bits of dirt um, which 
a simple quick wipe with cellulose thinners would have resolved no problem. The paint cup itself, this is the seal, which I believe is made of Viton, as mentioned previously, and that's quite grubby, as you can tell. These two seals should be similar colour, so you can see that's got quite a bit of caked on paint and what have you. That one's not overly crucial, however, because it is just the paint cup, as long as it seals well enough. The nozzle, which I want to make sure I've got a good grip on, because I don't want that to ping off and lose it, is reasonably clean on the outside, but if I can get that to catch the light, so you can see the inside of it, hopefully you'll see that that's quite caked in paint. So that's going to need a good soak in cellulose thinners. I removed the O-ring, which is not in a particularly good state. I'm going to see if it will refit without and seal without the O-ring. If it doesn't, then I shall probably use um, a bit of beeswax on that. And if that doesn't seal, it should do. But if it doesn't, then I will just have to get a new seal for that. So the inside of the paint cap is not bad. That's quite clean. The threads on the outside, however, are not particularly clean. So again, a good scrub with a Q-tip or cotton bud soaked in cellulose thinner. And likewise with the air cap. The air valve assembly itself is, uh, is clean. There's no problem whatsoever with that. So that will be reassembled. Now I'm just going to focus in down here and show you the assembly procedure or the order that this will, this will have to be reassembled in. You'll notice, hopefully there, that the spring is actually conical in shape. It has a narrow end and a wide end. The narrow end fits on a ring in, on this brass pin here, which is your air valve, and the wide end fits on this, which is the, the brass nut that screws in with the Allen key or um, hex wrench, whatever you happen to call them. And it's important you get those the correct way around because if you get them the wrong way around, the larger end will actually slip over the air valve and it won't work correctly. And then as you've seen, the Teflon seal, which as I said, did, uh, did happen to knock out of shape ever so slightly, but hopefully that will be okay on reassembly. I think it will once it's in, seated, and the nut here is cleaned and tightened down. Again, hopefully you can see down there the bits of dirt inside the uh, slotted and threaded portion. So it just shows you how dirt can really get into place in an airbrush, and especially an airbrush where you think you've cleaned it. And the most obvious area of uh, paint, and I don't know if that's paint or if it's actually where the chrome is wearing through on the brass, and that could just be to do with the cleaner that the previous owners used. But you can see there that's caked in paint, as is the outside and as are the threads. So that also needs a soak and a very, very good clean. I'm gonna go ahead, give this a good thorough clean using cellulose thinners because cellulose is a, is a great sort of cover all thinners to use um, regardless of the type of paint. It will pretty much dissolve anything apart from chemically cured paint such as 2Ks. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a thorough clean at which point subsequent use will only require a strip down to the first stage as mentioned. At this point here, I'm in the middle of finishing the cleaning of the parts and as you can see the needle packing and the needle packing nut has been cleaned and is nice and clean. And I'm just gonna show you here how to um, easily fit the needle packing nut and the packing back on the airbrush. So placing the needle back in the front of the brush, slide the needle packing onto it, and then slide the needle packing nut onto that. Now you should just be able to see in there, the needle packing and the needle packing nut. I've actually just swapped the needle packing nut around because as you may have noticed in the previous one, I'd put that the wrong way around. So the threaded portion was, was at the wrong side, but I've just swapped that around. 
and what you need to do once that's dropped into place is pull the needle forward which has been cleaned incidentally with a wipe of cellulose thinners so you need to pull this forward enough so that you can just get the slot of the screwdriver into the needle packing nut like so which will allow you to begin to fasten it in which will press the needle packing in now don't tighten it too much to begin with and what you need to do now is fine tune the how it grips in the needle packing so that's quite loose there so I need to nip it up a little bit and when you do this bit this is tiny tiny fractions of a turn is all you need and you want it to grip reasonably tightly tightly enough so that it will uh, it will hold the needle in place but not so tight that you will that you really have to force it and remembering of course that the point of this needle packing is to prevent paint from creeping back into the air valve assembly that feels pretty good so we'll leave it at that here we are with the reassembled Neo and As expected, the O-ring for the nozzle is uh, damaged beyond use and split when I was trying to replace it onto the nozzle. Unfortunately, it wouldn't seal without the O-ring. And what I have done just at the moment is used a little bit of PTFE tape, a tiny, tiny bit of PTFE plumber's tape. Uh, wrapped around the nozzle and sealed in which is doing the job just at the moment because I can't find any beeswax um, but beeswax should do the job nicely oops meanwhile I will look at replacement nozzles but just to show you the whole thing is cleaned it's spotless it has we've got rid, rid of all the paint and gunk that was in there and just so that you can see we're there we've got no bubbling back in the cup which shows that we're okay and hopefully if I can get something of a nice dark contrast so that you'll be able to see such as this You can see we've got a nice, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Linear spray pattern. So we start with a nice small fan leading up to a much larger one. As I open the nozzle, I'll just pop a bit more IPA in there and show you. So starting with a nice thin pattern to a full spray as you can see there so that's the Neo cleaned and I'm just going to give this a wipe over so it's nice and clean and then I'll show you the the muck that we got out of this and this is a risk that you take when you whenever you buy a second-hand airbrush so just be aware that when you buy a second-hand airbrush unless you happen to know that the person in question who owned it is meticulous in their cleaning routine um, as I demonstrate in my other video then there's no guarantee that you're getting a good working spotlessly clean airbrush and it's important to know how to clean it and where to look for faults if that is the case. That's the Neo Friwata, the Neo CN um, for Iwata. 
with its two different colour cups, as you can see here, and that's been cleaned. It took six cotton buds and a couple of bits of tissue and lots of cellulose thinner and quite a bit of soaking of various bits and pieces. Now that's now spotlessly clean, which is exactly how I like my brushes to be. And from this point on, just the initial stripping as demonstrated at the start of this video will be adequate for cleaning, provided it's done immediately after spraying and provided that you stick to the method of drawing the needle out from the front. That means that you won't be getting any more rubbish going back into the needle packing seal and into the trigger area um, and air valve area. And just to give you a bit of an idea of the gunk that came out of this, and you can see there from the cup, that's considerably cleaner. There is a little bit of brassing there where the chrome, looks like the chrome has worn away or been eaten away a little. I did think that was staining at first, but it does actually look like it's eaten through the chrome a bit. But you can see that that's now very, very clean. And the rubber seal is considerably cleaner. I just gave that a very, very quick wipe with cellulose thinners. And not leaving it in it too long, just because I don't know if it is definitely Viton. I'm guessing it is. And the brush, obviously, as you can see, considerably cleaner itself. In the nozzle, if I can just quickly focus on. The nozzle area for you, hopefully. There you go. And you can see inside the paint bowl, much, much cleaner. I'll just pop that to one side and we'll focus back down here. And this is one of the cotton buds, which is still complete and is filthy. And then we have got a whole ream of um, tips of cotton buds, which I saved just specifically to, to show you after the cleaning process. This particular one, for example, was the one that was uh, pushed down inside where the needle packing seal goes. You can see how dirty that is. And this particular one, which was... Um, from cleaning the nozzle cap and the fan cap. So you can see there was an awful lot of pigment and paint still, still stuck on in various areas of the brush. So it's deceptive, although something may look very, very clean on the outside, it's deceptive how dirty it can actually be inside. And strangely enough, the Hardron Steambeck that I did my video on recently looked dirtier than this but was in fact cleaner than this and then the badger prior to that which was very very dirty and looked um, a bit sort of um, uncared for externally this this was about the same level of dirty inside this is why it's very very important to maintain and clean your airbrush properly. Your airbrush is a precision tool. If you look after it, it will be ready for you to use time after time after time, and it will last you years with only the most basic maintenance. So do bear that in mind. Check out my other video on airbrush cleaning and check out my airbrush fault finding video. I will be doing a video very, very soon on starting with your first airbrush setup and your typical kind of setups, looking at your basic compressors, Chinese brushes, and onwards up to different levels of brushes. So I hope this has been useful for you. Thank you for watching. And for anybody that has a Neo in particular, I hope you found this very useful. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye now.